Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, a show where we talk about everything that is new in Gwent. And today we uh, are going to discuss everything in the new journey, in Alzur's journey, the third journey in the game at the back right off the uh, series journeys. They didn't keep us waiting for another month to have our third journey, and it is uh, right here. We're going to talk in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, characters in the journey because for, of course Alzur is a pretty unfamiliar character if you just played the games and even if you uh, read the books he doesn't get mentioned all that much. Um, we're going to take a look at all the cosmetics and then how those cosmetics are earned because there's been a very very nice change in some of the extra cosmetics that you can earn uh, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. So first up the story. The story is going to revolve around um, a young woman called Galantea, or Galantea, I'm not actually sure how you should pronounce that. And I'm pretty sure she's a new character in the Witcher universe created for Gwent. Um, unless somebody can help me here, but I don't think she's ever been mentioned anywhere, or it might have been a very, very small mention. But um, Alzur, on the other hand, we're going to, um, those two characters are going to meet up. And that's what the story is going to be about, I suppose. Um, this is the start of the story. It's going to evolve over the next 12 weeks. But Alzur is a much more familiar character. So Alzur is one of the older mages, the older sorcerers. If I'm not mistaken, he's even, he even predates that uh, elixir that keeps sorcerers and uh, sorceresses young. So... He's not one of those guys, but he's one of the older mages who was responsible for a lot of big monster experiments. We'll see that in the um, in the cosmetics as well in a minute. And of course, he was the ma the major player in the the creation of the witchers themselves. So he was behind most of the work that was done to create the mutagens and um, everything that was needed to create the witchers. Um, but What's more important in this uh, journey, is it still worth it? I believe it is, because I think we even get more cosmetics than we got before, if I'm not mistaken. I think the bottom row is a lot more filled in than it was before. And uh, as you'll see when we're going through this, the um, premium pot has also been upgraded with uh, premium cards that are specific cards, so you know what you're gonna get, Beforehand, so it's no longer a luck of the draw aside from of course what you're getting from the kegs um, But other than that you get really specific premium golden cards um, Let's go through them uh, one by one. So of course the leader skin that you're gonna get is Alzur So the mage himself uh, Ready to lead any and all of your decks because of course he's a neutral skin as usual um, Then we get some nice borders as usual, but uh, the Outfits of Alzur are going to define what the other cosmetics are. So, for example, if you move a bit further, so we already have uh, new coins as well. And then we get mutagen avatars, which of course fits in with Alzur creating the witchers. But if you move a bit further and go to the first outfit, I just want to highlight the card backs, because the card backs, of course, are really interesting as well. Um, we can actually see his next outfit and his next outfit is the druid skin so it's gonna come down to trying to dress him in the different factions of mages so the first one is druid um, there's a an aura for it as well that just surrounds him with a green glow and leaves and then there's this fancy druid hat that you can put on his head as well and uh, that's basically it for the druid section then the next skin, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the, the bigger mage one, right? Yeah, so the Ronin skin. Uh, so going back to that, uh, those Japanese origins, since we already had a Ronin skin for Siri as well, also gets the same treatment. And of course, he gets a fancy mask to go with that. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's a staff here as well. So a focus staff that he can use as a sort of ornament. Um, next up, if I'm not mistaken, the next one is the, I think I skipped over a card back here, didn't I? There we go. This is another really cool, so this is the double cross card back, if you remember, so it's right next to the double cross card as well. So Alzur's double cross uh, refers to the time that Alzur actually, well, kind of turned a demon by uh, convincing him to join his side. 
Uh, and of course, the image that you're seeing here, you might be familiar with the monster that you see here because it's, of course, the Weigern. It's not completely linked to one another because, of course, the eye over here is not that of the Weigern, but still, it's a very nice, uh, very cool card back. I see me using this one uh, in a lot of matches because it's uh, it's just just it's just a perfect perfect card back, isn't it? Especially for monsters, this is uh, a looker. And further in, we have the gene modification card back. Um, that's not specifically pointing towards witchers alone, even though we see Keijin in the back. I don't think even Alzer had a link to Keijin. Um, but that's more towards the mutations that the, um, the mages were experimenting with in, at that time. So you see human modification, but also crea the creation of beasts, which is... Uh, it's something we might learn a bit more during the journey. Then we have the, I think it's a necromancer skin. So again, a different school of magic, raising the dead, um, who, which also includes a few uh, extra ornaments like the eye of Nehali, 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 Nehalini. Nehalini, Nehalini, something like that. Um, and then, of course, the Weigen car card, the animated version of the Weigen card, which is uh, pointing to what I was saying before, that you actually get specific premium golden cards in this journey. Uh, I think we already passed Philippa here as well, yeah, so you can get uh, the premium version of Philippa Blind Fury as well in this premium pop. Um, just skipping ahead a little bit, we also get a nice face paint for the Necromancer skin. Um, and then we get, of course, a black aura, a black shadowy aura for the Necromancer skin, so just to fit that team. And then the final one is actually really, really cool. Uh, you might have seen that in the, one of the first avatars as well. Alzer actually gets a full set of armor, and you might be wondering what, he, what are you talking about, Trophinet, a full set of armor? He doesn't have a helmet. Well, the helmet is actually, because you can see the helmet in the avatar over here as well, the helmet is also available, but you need to uh, win or play a number of matches, I'll check that in the contracts in a minute, to actually get that helmet. Uh, there's actually two helmets that you can earn. Um, but I skipped over, did I skip over another card back? I don't think I did. We checked out all the card backs. No, I didn't skip over any. So the last one that you see is the one depicting the Sphinx. So the uh, confrontation between Alzur and the Sphinx. So that's basically all the cosmetics you can get. I skipped over a few avatars and ornaments and stuff like that. But other than that, these are the ornaments that you can get. So the last three are the uh, ancient cube focus. And then, of course, the beetle coin uh, combined with the full armor skin for Alzur himself. Keep that in mind. I'm repeating that because you should keep that in mind. Because now we're going to go to the contracts, which is something that they changed and I really, really like. So if you move back to contracts and then move all the way to the bottom, because um, that's usually the easiest way to find them, they're always near the bottom of the list if you just sort them to all. Um, you can see there's specific quests, there's new quests that have been added that give you a few more reward points while you're going. So you don't need to complete every quest to get 15 reward points. Once you've completed 10 of them, you get uh, in total 15 reward points from just this uh, looking for adventure quest. And at the end, you get the Witcher Creator uh, title as well. Then, as you can see, the 20 reward points are still there, but... They've been um, combined into uh, another quest over here, the In Elzer Shoes, and that actually gives you the Thunder's Aura. So you can get a very cool aura just from completing all the quests. So it's not locked behind an egregious amount of levels as before, because I think for the Siri ornaments, you had to eventually reach uh, level 175 in the journey to get the Siri's biggest fan title, which was really really scummy I didn't really like that but right now uh, there's no um, there's not a single cosmetic locked behind anything further than level 100 so if you go through the list a bit further so you have the level 100 you get the thunder as a title as well another one you get of course the Galantea avatar and um, the Alzur's avatar as well. So that's the same as it was before. But then we get into the more juicy stuff. So if you play 200 games with Alzur as your leader, so it doesn't matter which outfit, just any Alzur skin, you actually get the Cosmic Aura, which is an, a very cool visual like shield that you can get. 
Um, then if you win games with the Druid outfit, there's also reward points tied to that, a title, uh, more reward points, the Druid Sickle, which looks like that, is going to be an ornament, I assume. And then, of course, the Druid Invocation Circle, which is an aura that is projected on the floor. You also get extra reward points from playing games with the Avatar. And I think that basically applies to most of the um, avatars and outfits. So, for example, you can also get Alzu's Ronin outfit. And if you get to 20 wins with that outfit, you'll get the Ronin mask, which of course fits a lot better than that Sun and Moon mask with the Ronin skin. Other than that, so more reward points. Then, for, same deal for the Necromancer skin. We get two extra things aside from the title. We also get the Dark Dagger, which is a nice curved design. And then after 40 wins, so it just escalates, but you don't lose these quests even after the journey has completed, we get the Demonic Invocation Circle. So we get a floor-based aura, which shows you that really cool uh, Invocation Circle that you might have seen uh, when Yennefer did similar um, spells in either the games or the series. Um, then of course, the army. That's Basically for me, this is the coolest skin. Sadly, it's at the end of the, the journey. But uh, if you win 20 games, you get that uh, that gray. I think it's supposed to be the gray helmet, but it looks a bit orange on the screenshot. But I think it's supposed to be just that metal looking gray helmet. Because if I'm not mistaken, you get a few other borders if you play with the mutagen trinkets. But if we go further, because there's a lot of reward points that you can earn. Oh, I kind of skipped over it. Oh, I'm sorry. So if you win a games with either the armor outfit, um, the beetle coin or the ancient cube focus. So remember that those are the last things that you earn in those last five levels. Um, you have another upgrade part that you can get the golden boy. The reason why you're getting golden boy is because at 20 wins, you actually get the golden helmet and it looks a bit more shiny over here. But even cooler, you actually get a full golden armor set as well, which is really, really cool and something to aim for if you finished up the journey. But again, this doesn't go away if journey ended. If you're like me, I only got to level 102 in the previous journey. I never bought any of the levels because those are way too expensive. But if you only get to that, you can still keep those, um, those quests here because they're going to stay in there even after the journey has completed. To prove that, similar quests for like the Geralt skins and the Siri skins are also still available if you go up. Like for example, here we get the uh, Ronin's Journey, play 100 games with a Ronin or Scarlet Ronin outfit is still here, so I can still get that straw hat if I wanted to. Same for the Unicorn coin and stuff like that. The only thing that I really can't get anymore is I think Siri's biggest fan, because of course Siri's extended journey is done, so I can't get those older uh, quest rewards. But those in this journey are completely gone so I'm really really happy with that change and that's about it for this episode of Gwentech we went through everything in the journey if you're looking for more information on journey that you didn't find in this video just ask me in the comment section down below and I'll get you an answer as soon as possible so uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you've enjoyed this episode don't forget to leave a like tell me what you think about the new journey do you like the new characters do you like the cosmetics or is this just not your cup of tea just let me know and we can discuss this down below and if you're aching for more, I have plenty of deck guides that are still viable since there wasn't any patch changes in these, uh, no balance changes in the last patch. So uh, there we go. Uh, next up, we'll probably talk about draft mode and of course, another deck guide in the weekend. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwendage. Thank you very much and goodbye.